This is the top of the hour, so we'll get started. I'd like to welcome everyone to today's GlomCon seminar. I'm Dia Wagesbach in Houston. Today, our talk is Current Approaches in the Treatment of MGRS, and we are excited to have Dr. Ladon Zian. I'm excited to be here to talk to you about current approaches in treatment of MGRS. I do receive, well, not me, but Mayo Clinic uh, does receive funding through Genentech and Janssen to conduct clinical trials, and I will be discussing off-label use of daratumumab. So the objectives of the talk are to give you an overview of the monoclonal related diseases, and then discuss general treatment approaches in patients with MGRS, and more specifically talk about current treatment options that are available for patients with PG and MID. So when thinking about MGRS, I always like to think about the spectrum of the disease from MGUS to multiple myeloma and look and see where MGRS would fit. So on one end of the spectrum, we have MGUS, which is when you have M protein less than three gram per deciliter, plasma cells less than 10%. And the key here is that you do not have evidence of end organ damage. Further along is smoldering myeloma, where you have more monoclonal protein, more plasma cells, but you still do not have evidence of end organ damage. And then at the end of the spectrum is where you have multiple myeloma, which not only you have more than 10% plasma cells and your M protein is high, but you now have evidence of end organ damage, which we have these myeloma defining events that the acronym for it is CRAP for hypercalcemia. Renal failure is shown to be from um, the monoclonal protein, more so CAS nephropathy is here, what we're talking about, anemia and bone disease. And then more recently, we also think about events that are suggesting, uh, suggestive of impending myeloma. So if you're Involved to uninvolved free light chain ratio is more than 100. If you have more than plasma, 60% plasma cells, even in the absence of end organ damage, we call that multiple myeloma, or if you have one or more bony lesions on MRI. And the reason this distinction is so important is because if uh, you have MGUS, you don't need treatment. If you have smoldering myeloma, you don't need treatment, or sometimes you can go into clinical trials. And if you do have multiple myeloma, you certainly do need to be treated. And then obviously over the years, we have come to notice that there are patients who do have these monoclonal proteins and the monoclonal protein is causing renal damage, but it, is not, it does not meet the criteria for multiple myeloma. And that's where the term MGRS has come from. Now, this graph that I've shown you applies to plasma cell clone. The same is true for a B cell clone. So on one end, you have monoclonal B cell lymphocytosis. On the other end, you will have chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Same is true for a lymphoplasmacytic clone, which mainly would be IgM MGUS on one hand, and then on the other end of the spectrum would, de, would be Waldenstrom macroglobulinemia. And again, MGRS would be somewhere in between where you do have the monoclonal protein, but you do the only organ damage that now you have is kidney involvement. So the definition of monoclonal gammopathy of renal significance is when you have a clonal disorder of a B cell, plasma cell, that produces a nephrotoxic monoclonal protein, but does not meet the criteria for hematologic malignancy. And you also have to show that the renal disease is secondary to the monoclonal protein. So certainly just having CKD and a MGUS doesn't necessarily mean that you have an MGRS lesion. You have to do a biopsy to prove that. And there are different ways that the monoclonal protein can cause renal injury. Most of the time is from direct deposition of the monoclonal protein but it can also be an indirect effect through activation of the complement pathway. And you can also have direct effect that's not from a deposit, but from endothelial cell injury where you can have developed TMA lesions. So there are lesions without deposits. So let's take another look of how the monoclonal proteins can directly cause renal injury. The main um, differentiating factor really comes down to your electron microscopy. You want to look to see, do you have deposits? And if you do, are they organized or are they not organized? Or is there no deposit? When you think about organized, then you want to look at the shape of what you're looking at on your electron microscopy. Are you seeing fibrils? Are they microtubules? Are you seeing crystals? And then the next step would be further subdividing those depending, for example, on the size of the fibril. Is it amyloid or fibrillar GN? Just a side note that fibrillary GN very, very rarely causes MGRS. Most of the times these deposits are polyclonal. Uh, for microtubules, is it, you know, immunotactoid features or is it cryoglobulinemia? 
And with the crystals, I usually like to think of it, where is the crystal deposited? If it's in tubal, is light chain proximal tubulopathy? If it's in the interstitial?